All right. Welcome, everybody. This is my wellness way group, right? We are all practitioners. We all went through the Wellness Way Academy at one point in time. We've gotten to be friends. We consider ourselves co-workers, and we just want to talk a little bit tonight because it's October. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We just want to talk about what we know now, what we wished we would have known then, um, what makes us a really amazing group of women is we all have something unique to bring to the table. We're all at different ages. We're all at different stages of life. My name is Tanya Candy. I live in Montana, right on the North Dakota border. My background is in nursing. Um, I am an RN. Still keep my license, even though I consider myself completely divorced from healthcare. <laughs> I have a business here. I see clients um, virtually and in person. And the name of my business is called Awaken Wellness. I'm going to introduce you to Mary. She is one of my, I'm going to call you a coworker. Mary, how does that sound for a title? Great. <laughs> so. Um, I'm Mary Miles. I live in New Jersey. Um, and I got into this field because I was failed by the medical system. No one could figure out what was going on. Um, and it was my holistic nutritionist who did some testing and got to the root cause of my health issues. Had she not, I... I would probably be on handfuls of medicine, including antidepressants, which I refused. Um, and I've just been passionate about helping other people get out of the rut that um, you get put into um, when you go to your doctor with a handful of, let's just say, symptoms. And so um, I'm just passionate about helping people restore their health. So, right. Thank you. So who's ever watching us on replay, Mary is available, available and she takes clients. And if you would like to see her one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to have Mary go ahead in the chat and type her information. So if she's got a phone number that she likes to be contacted by, or if she's got a website that she likes to be contacted by, she will add that to the chat. Next, we have Brooke. Hey, Brooke. Introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Brooke Wright. Um, and my story kind of starts, um, I am a chemistry major. So I have that as kind of my background. And I got into um, pharmaceuticals and working as an analytical chemist for about three and a half years and really got a lot of exposure to kind of the backside of the big pharma world. And that was uh, really eye opening for me. Um, during that time there, my dad got diagnosed with leukemia, um, and he passed away within about nine months. Um, and today is actually his, uh, seven year anniversary of him passing away. Um, so that kind of kick started, um, after he passed, um, that along with my, um, background in pharmaceutical medicine, just um, the world of pharmaceuticals and how it wasn't um, best suiting for a lot of people. Um, and I didn't really like the outcomes that I was seeing in my own um, experience and with my experience at work. Um, and I really felt through the whole um, process, um, I was really on the sidelines of things and I decided kind of after my dad passed away that I didn't want to sit on the sidelines anymore um, for my own health, for my family's health, and ultimately um, for my client's health. Um, so I did the Wellness Way Academy and enjoyed it so much. Um, and now I'm working at a chiropractor's office. The company's name is called A Tone of Life. And that's where I do my wellness consulting from. Right. That is awesome. I love that. You have a chiropractor, <clears throat> excuse me, who is open-minded. All right. And that I, mm -hmm. 
myself, I always had always had a chiropractor in my life as a patient or whatnot. So I think it's been so fun to co-op and grow with this chiropractic community. All right, next we're going to talk to Jen down there. Hey, Jen, tell us about yourself. Hello, um, my name is Jen and I am in Bismarck, North Dakota. Um, I had no interest in medical. I guess I wasn't, um, it wasn't part of my brain until I had children. And then, um, and then I just kind of researched and my eye, my mind was kind of open, like what? There's different, uh, possibilities with your medical other than just the medical establishment. And then um, I did see a, a video of uh, the founder of the wellness by Dr. Patrick Flynn, and uh, it just blew my mind. And then ever since then, I was kind of obsessed with learning a different perspective and uh, going through. And then uh, so I just graduated from uh, the Wellness Way Academy as well. And uh, it's just very exciting to get going and helping people uh, learn a new perspective of health. Thank you. And make sure that you add your information in the chat, please. Up next is Connie. Hey, Connie, tell us about yourself. Hello, ladies. I'm so glad to see everybody. Um, like um, Tanya, I am an RN um, and I have divorced myself as well from, from the traditional medical model. Um, my journey started about three years ago when I began to have some you know, symptoms that were popping up and I had never really been sold on the whole idea of masking our symptoms with medication and I knew I didn't wanna go down that road. So I also, um, well, I was introduced to it actually by my chiropractor. And so that got me intrigued as I began my journey. And that's when I decided to do the Wellness Way Academy as well. Um, and that just opened up a whole new world. Um, my background was about 15 years of public health. So ladies, I was all about the immunizations and <laughs> all of those things. And I'm like, Tanya, I wish I'd known 10, 20 years ago, what I know now, because things would have been different, but today we can start from now, right? Um, and so um, I did graduate, um, what was that a year ago, Tanya? I think we graduated in 2021, I think. Um, and so um, I began that journey and I have a business called Hope for Health, Missouri. And I'm very excited about helping others restore their health as well. Um, and so that's where I'm at. I'm actually, actually right now working with a wonderful physical therapy. It's a couple, a small business here in Columbia, Missouri, and they're helping me promote my business because they are like-minded and I love it. So that's kind of where I'm at and, and beginning to build my business. All right. Thank you. That is so awesome. I just love how all of these other avenues, all of these other practitioners, and I do think, you know, like if the pandemic, if all that did anything for us, it opened so many people's eyes, opened so many people's eyes to the fact um, of these different entities and how we can be working together to do things better. Um, let, next off, we're going to have Stacy, and then um, maybe I'll talk a little bit about the wellness way. I think there could be a lot of people watching us on replay that really have no idea what that even means. So we'll give Stacy a shot, and then we'll get back to that. Hi. Yeah, it's nice seeing everybody on here. It's been a little while, but um, I am a cosmetologist by trade of 34 years. I've been a salon owner of 22 years. Um, so I've been doing hair. I got into this in 2013 when my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. And when they told us not to do research, I did research and realized there was way more out there than traditional treatment. Um, so we did the traditional treatment with holistic and she survived the terminal cancer. And that was pretty much what got me turned on to it. I ended up going to school in 2008, 2017, graduated in 18 from IIN 
as a certified health coach. I did one year at SAFM, School of, of Applied Functional Medicine. Um, then I heard about the Wellness Way Academy, so I did not go back to that school. Um, I took the Wellness Way Academy and graduated also last year of 21. Um, biggest reason, like I said, was my mom's cancer. And then I've had health issues for a few years and the system definitely failed me. They put me on a medication and I almost died. Um, it was just, you know, one thing after another. And I said, never again, I'm going to help other people, assist other people in what we've learned. And I'm very passionate. I've had a little wellness business on the side for several years and just looking to grow it. Um, cancer, immune system are definitely my strong ones. I love the Dutch test and a few things like that. But yeah, it's definitely I'm here because of a failed system also. Oh, I'm still muted. There we go. Thank you. So just a little bit of background. If you're watch watching us on replay, um, we keep talking about the wellness way and what the wellness way is, is a um, system will and we'll use the words different perspective a lot. The wellness way was founded by Dr. Patrick Flynn, who is a chiropractor whose practice was growing, his voice was being heard, and there was there's just was a lot of people out there that wanted to know more. And it led to a training program. It led to an academy. Um, the academy has is a lot of amazing things. It gives you so much education. Um, it doesn't give you a license <clears throat> as a healthcare pr practitioner. So we consider ourselves coaches. We are restorative coaches. So we don't give medical advice. We don't diagnose. We're not going to tell you what to do with your prescriptions or anything like that. But we do love our tests. We love to get in there. We love to test. We love to use blood tests, stool tests, saliva tests. So we can know what's going on with a person's system and how to support it. So again, we're testing, but we're not interpreting the test with the same binocular as what a medical person does. So tonight we really wanted to hit on that subject of cancer. I think we might turn it over to Stacy and let her share a little bit more about her story and her mom's story. Um, myself, um, we we need to talk about hormones. We need to think about hormones. I turn 50 next week. Ah, oh, gosh, who would have guessed that 50 was just uh, a few days away for me. And in my past, I, I would love, I should just do some research on it one day when I have time. I'd love to know what the links look like between people who had their tubes tied, who ended up with a hysterectomy, who ended up with cancers. Like there's got to be some connections there. Um, as a nurse, I was oblivious. I was oblivious. I worked in a system where if stuff doesn't work right, or if you're finished with it, you just cut it out and it's no big deal, right? So I was that person in my oblivion at the ripe old age of 22, I had my tubes tied and then it led to some issues down the road. I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg, but now I know when you take that blood supply and you snap that, things change, things don't go right. That wasn't how the Lord designed our bodies to work. Then down the road, those problems came. I'm really chesty. So I'm, you know, then the menstruation and the heavy clotting and the doctor said, well, let's just cut it out. I sure I'm done with it. i I could go without having the hassle of a heavy menstruation every month, completely, completely oblivious. So I do have a heart to talk to that younger generation to learn from my mistakes and not to relive the past. Then just a little bit of that estrogen dominance was only a part of my problem in my own healthcare. It was, it was only a part of it. When we talk about testing. Um, a couple of tests that I've done that I've seen that estrogen problem stick with me, even without that uterus, without that blood supply to those ovaries. Um, we talk a lot about like stool testing, and we'll talk about a level of beta glucuronidase. Mine was 
off the chart that's super linked to estrogen dominance, to estrogen issues, to GI dysfunction, yeast problems. And I did a Dutch test. We'll talk about that as well. You'll hear us talk a lot about Dutch test, which we really recommend a female of any age know where you're at with a Dutch test. And it'll tell us about um, your hormones, about your pathways, about your liver, how things are going, how they look in your blood when you're going into that hormone level, and then what your liver is doing with it coming out of it. My cancer pathways in my Dutch test, obnoxiously loud. So then I just, you know, praise the Lord every day that I've got tools to work on these things, to adjust these things, because we, we talk about breast cancer, we talk about estrogens, like they're the most evil component of this, but yet the cancer generally happens post-menopause when the estrogen is basically gone. So what's the real problem? What's the root problem? Where did the cancer really come from? How much did it have to do with your hormones in the first place? Hands up. Who wants to jump in? <laughs> I can. All right. We'll throw I'll it at in. Stacey. Yeah, that's like you were saying, the Dutch test, you know, I think my story is very similar to yours. I was tube side at a young age, you know, top heavy too, the, like we're talking about busty, um, should have had a hysterectomy. I will be honest and never did, um, pretty much mirrors what you were saying. And I do think, you know, once we do go through menopause and things like that with our estrogens, it's the pathways. It, we have to run these labs, these Dutch you know, you have to have liver conversion. You have to see, you know, if you're clearing these. Otherwise, um, yeah, definitely the cancer comes, you know, in the female forms for sure, whether it's breast or ovarian, cervical or anything like that. You know, we were so educated to be able to run these tests to be able to see, to prevent, especially like with my mom having cancer and other people's, you know, moms and siblings having cancer. So we need to have the preventative to be able to you know, try to try not to get it. No guarantees, but at least be aware of where things could go wrong, especially like you say, after menopause, when our hormones go kind of haywire from, you know, environmental and toxins and clearance is a big one. Those pathways are huge. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. So I'm sure a lot of people don't know what what do we mean by these pathways? Like, all right, somebody, I don't know, one of you ladies has got a good explanation for this. Tell me what the world you mean by pathway. Jen, you want to try it? Uh, yeah, the different pathways is how your liver metabolizes hormones and how it uh, excretes different hormones from the body. And if uh, basically if your liver gets ingested, uh, it will not allow the proper amount of hormones to go through the different pathways. And that causes a buildup on some pathways and then uh, too much in others. Kind of like a, uh, a hallway that gets flooded with people. Um, too many people, it gets congested versus if everybody has equal amount of people walking down the proper hallways, then it can go out easily. And that causes major hormone imbalance in the body. Right. So if someone kind of thought their hormones were out of whack or your estrogen dominant, say, um, what, what would be some symptoms of that? Like what, what might they have going on that would alert someone that it would be like really relevant, totally worth it to do a little testing. How about Mary, you want to jump in on that? Sure. So, so mood swings, hot flashes, fatigue, um, even just digestion issues um, of any kind, sleep dis uh, disruptions. I mean, the list is really long. <laughs> any of those common oh I have four kids yeah life is busy oh you know yeah well I'm you know over 40 or I'm over 50 
there's no excuse for feeling bad. Something is going on. So let's get to the root of the problem. People these days, I think, accept um, that tired is normal. It's not normal. They accept that, you know, a little joint pain here and a little stomach upset there is normal. So they just take their over-the-counter Tums or Pepsi or whatever. It's not normal. Your body is trying to tell you something. Something is out of whack. And um, what we've learned is that the body is constantly trying to maintain this uh, homeostasis or balance. And so it's not making mistakes when you have hot flashes or when you have a headache or when you have migraines either. Um, it's not making mistakes. It's trying to compensate um, and get your body back to homeostasis. So that's why your lab, something will look high, something will look low. The body is trying to do this constantly. Every minute, every hour, you've got like a lot of different systems trying to work together to maintain this homeostasis. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, thanks. And that like was totally reminding me about root cause, right? We always want to know root cause. Like you don't just wake up one day with cancer. Like that happened progressively over time. Granted, <laughs> breast cancer isn't necessarily um an old person's disease. It can happen to young people. There are genetic factors like that BRCA gene, but even if that gene is present, it still has to get expressed, right? So um, what's the elephant in the room? What's the big root cause, right? Is it the immune system? Is it inflammation? Like, like what's going on in the body? What are all these things like a healthy body can defend itself against cancer. So, Brooke, tag, you're it. What is some of those root causes? Like, what what can you tell us? Where where do we go from here? What do we need to know? Yeah, I would say that cellular abnormalities are are common and and they're present in everybody's body. But it's when there's a buildup of those cellular abnormalities in one particular area that is a a cause for concern. And the testing that we do um, through some blood work and some other lab kits, um, we can test the immune system. We can look at your first line of defense, your um, natural killer cells, your CD4, your CD8 ratios, um, see how those um, markers are doing and so that we can assess where your immune system is at. And then we have um, through our education, um, tools in our back pocket to help um, give your immune system what it's needing and so that it can return back to um, a good homeostasis level. Yeah, ex exactly. And Tanya, I would, yes. I would add to that that this is not a quick fix. This is not a take a pill. This is not your um, it, what people expect when they go to the doctor, right? Give me a pill, give me a shot. Let me, let me go home and live my life. Um, it, it might take a long time to get to the root cause, but it's so worth it. Mm -hmm. When I was working with my nutritionist 12 years ago, it took us a year. Um, I immediately felt, be felt better after I had my allergies tested and realized I was reacting severely to certain foods. Um, but after that, it just was kind of a domino effect. Again, that homeostasis, my body was taking what I was giving it and then trying to get back in homeostasis, but it took a year. Right. So, so it's, you got to be patient, be patient right. with your body. And so you mentioned allergies or food allergies. So, um, yeah, Mary, what does that have to do with cancer <laughs> prevention? <laughs> well, um, so I did an antibody test and my body was building up antibodies against eggs. And so antibodies create inflammation. It's kind of this, this response, this inflammatory response that your body, um, has, um, 
And we like to say, you know, when you cut your finger, you want that inflammatory response, right? That's going to be bringing oxygenated blood and healing your finger. But when it's systemic and it's all over your gut and it's all over your body, your body can't um, function properly and heal that inflammation. So, um, so yeah, it plays a big part in how your body functions as a whole. It's, it's like this domino effect as all kinds of things can get out of whack. Yeah, that was a good explanation. And that is something that's super, super hard to explain. I think we always struggle with that with our clients. Um, They come in for a consultation and, you know, they've got a laundry list of problems. And of course, we all want to talk about our problems. Our problems is what brought you here. And it's like the look on their face when you start talking about food allergies, everybody instantly says, I don't have any food allergies. And then what do you say? Oh, I didn't think that I did either, but that's generally just not the case. And it's not that those foods are boom, you know, you're not going to drop dead because of your food allergies. It's not that kind of allergy. It's a process. It's layers of layers of layers of things that is just too much for your body to handle. It's just one toxic exposure after another. And eventually you become weak, your body becomes fragile. You might um, have an autoimmune diagnosis. And I think I'm gonna turn that over to Connie. Connie, what is our theory about autoimmune? Is your body attacking itself? Yes, in a sense. Um, It's a a hyperactivity to um, what's going on in the body. So your your immune system is hyperactive. So it is attacking, but not, um, it's not a mistake. Um, it's your body's way of surviving. Um, I'm just trying to think of an example, um, like hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. Um, same thing when the thyroid's overworked, um, it will begin to shut down. Um, and so the body will start to, um, try to, um, I'm, I kind of put me on the spot here, Tanya. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, sorry. Um, I guess I, I'm sorry. I'm on, that's I'm on right. the spot. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It's the first time I made you talk. It's good. It's um, like they're just being put on the spot is a little bit of a stressor. It's a stress response. Right. So whenever we have that stress response, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, your heart rate goes up a little bit, right? Just like if your, um, your blood pressure, if you want to run high blood pressure, I love Dr. Flynn's explanation of that when he will say, well, does, is your a big toe attached to your blood pressure, right? Everybody's like, no, right. my toes got nothing to do with my blood pressure. Well, if I came over right. and I stomp on your big toe, that stress response is going to push up your blood pressure. Right. So they are connected. And when we talk about say autoimmune, the body or anything else, we can't mm-hmm. unconnect any of it. So, right just like doing new things like this is it's a growth response it's a stress response um it's it's unnatural it's out of the box all those little things play into our risk factors for cancer um if you're a person who you know whether it's work or an injury toxins in your life whether you've got you know, tap water that needs to be addressed, mold exposure, all those little things add up to your body becoming fragile, add up to your body not being able to handle that burden. And there too, then the majority of that trauma ends up in your liver. Your liver Mm -hmm. struggles every day to process its environment. And it's got to take those hormones, those toxins to a state of fat soluble to water soluble. We've got to be able to methylate through our liver to get all those things out. And there are so many factors. Um, Genetically speaking, I think some people 
do have better genes. I think some of us were built a little bit more fragile. They say in general that women, because of our hormones, we're just at a disadvantage. We tend to be a little bit more fragile. Um, your majority of people with autoimmune disease, um, you know, women are just loaded up in the negative there. So we have to work a little bit harder. Um, in our practices, each and every one of us work with our clients to help find and identify stressors, not only food allergy stressors, your emotional stressors. Um, we act as a coach. We act as a little bit of a therapist to help our clients dig in a little bit deeper to be that sounding board to help them resolve some of these issues. Um we don't really want to name drop on supplements. So my brain almost went there. And not that we, you know, have all these secrets that we don't want to give away any of the secrets. We just don't like to name drop supplements because everybody's an individual and it's not one of those things that you can just run out, you know, and replace. We all know that exercise is good, that water is good, that sleep is good, but we don't all have the support we need to implement those things in our lives. So that's where working with a coach is great. Working with somebody who keeps you accountable is great. Um, as women with um, breast cancer, let's talk about some of those little things. Um, well, like the, the do's and don'ts per se, like, you know, um, the bras or the underwire, like, are, are you guys in that crowd of, you know, just comfort is one thing, but we have so many lymph glands in our armpits and whole, oh, and then deodorant. Does anybody want to touch on that? That's a whole nother subject. Um, maybe our crowd here that's listening today, maybe they're just starting their wellness journey. Maybe they don't know about aluminum deodorant. Maybe they don't know about blocking those sweat glands and what a detriment that is, how our lymph tissue in our breasts has got so much to do with that cancer thing. Our lymph system is our garbage disposal in our whole body. And when we, because we don't like to smell bad and we don't like pit stains, and we don't like to sweat, how terrible, how we're setting ourselves up, how your teenagers, your young women in the locker rooms, they need to sweat. We need to do saunas. We need to get away from those perfumes. We need to let your armpits breathe. Um, does anybody want to jump in on some of that stuff? And let's just pretend our audience has never heard of any of these concepts. They're already, they're going around, they're wearing deodorant every day. Um, aluminum, you just, just assume, just assume that this is completely on new ears. Go ahead, Brooke. Oh. Oh. I was just gonna say. Okay. Um, yeah, well, starting um, with, with the deodorant, um, if you, if you have any like sort of name brand deodorant just or any deodorant you can just look at the back and if you don't recognize the ingredients um and I think that's ever, something that we all would talk about is is learning about ingredients and what you're putting not only in your body through through your mouth but what you're put, putting on your body on your skin um super important so if you can't read it and understand what it is um that, that's a that's a red flag number one. Uh, I would say if if you can't understand what it is, go look it up. Um, the Environmental Working Group has um, a really good database that you can look at um, to look up different skincare products, and they have a rating um, that assesses the cleanliness and um, the the cleanness of that particular product. Um, but yeah, what you put on your skin also gets absorbed directly into your bloodstream. Um, and when toxins get into your bloodstream, your immune system has to react to that and has to do and, and dispose of it um, in, the, in the best way possible. And that kind of also goes back to the liver and how it metabolizes toxins. Um, our whole body, every, every organ, every system is all connected um, so you really want to be conscious of what you're doing, um, 
not only eating, but um, what you're putting on your skin and, and what you're putting in your armpits. And and that even goes down, um, you know, to to your lady bits too, and what you're what you're putting down there. Um, if you're using tampons or pads, even underwear, you want to be really careful about what you're putting in those sensitive areas. Um, making sure to get organic. There's lots of really great companies out there now that um, are very like-minded, um, like us, and really care about. Um, feminine hygiene and doing it properly and um, supporting your body um, in the best way possible. That's really good advice. That's that that is excellent advice. Stuff that I wish I would have known and cared about 20 years ago. I I really do. So I just can't stress that, especially if you're in that younger age group or if you're watching and you've got teenagers. And I know expense is always on everybody's mind, you know, like, oh, I just I was walking around Walmart the other day and I'm I'm just gonna say I'm not a Halloween person. I'm not trying to be an old buddy duddy, you know, or whatever, but I'm not one to spend my hard earned cash on junk like that, on, on well, candy for one thing, or decorations and that kind of stuff. And I just can't help but think, you know, and ugh, I just might ruffle a little feathers right here, you know, don't turn us off if I just instantly piss somebody off, but it, the truth sometimes hurts. And as a coach, um, you're going to get some tough love for me and you're going to hear some stuff that you don't necessarily want to hear. And I'm just going to say that I get really tired of my clients telling me what they can and can't afford when it comes to testing or when it comes to their supplements or when it comes to organic food, but they can afford board things like Halloween decorations and blow up shit in their yard and candy. I just struggle with that. Like this time of year, I struggle. I struggle with that. I struggle with all this gift buying of stuff that nobody needs, nobody wants, but you don't have money for supplements or you don't have money to eat organic. So that has anything to do with breast cancer but yet it does. It has so much to do with self-love and where you spend your dollars is what matters to you. And it's a tough, it's a tough decision. All of us live on some kind of budget and you, you have to decide, you know, um, even your kids, you have to decide, do they need, you know, name brand shoes or do they need healthy food? You know, like, everybody all these decisions and it might not look like a cancer argument like right here and now but in the big picture everything that we do matters this world is so toxic and so dirty and I was that person um you know, years ago, my mom was kind of organic and she was trying to do this and trying to do that. And my personality, my mindset, I tend to be such an all or nothing person. So when I was at the place where I, I live in Montana, um, we do not have an organic grocery store. My nearest Walmart is an hour away. So it's, it's not like I live in Yuppieville where I can just easily access a different quality of stuff. You have to make choices you have to make effort to do something different and so back then I was like I can't do it all so what's the point and now I've had to really really retrain myself and I know that when you start to replace products when you start to do differently the, the dollar signs just add up dollar sign dollar sign that's all people can see and that is just an excuse that is the excuse that they live for staying that's an excuse for staying in their comfort comfort zone. That's an excuse for not doing anything different. And even like deodorant wise, I just don't even wear it. Honestly, some days, especially if I'm hitting the detox a little bit harder, I just kind of stink and I'm fine with that. Like I'm fine with that. Um, <laughs> so save money on deodorant. If you don't want to buy expensive organic deodorant, you'll live without it. You'll live right through it. So some of those things, and then just start replacing things as you run out. Um, you don't have to go all in, but 
don't be an all or nothing person. Start somewhere. Start making a little choice. Um, one other thing I want to kind of bring up before we go any further or before we're done with our call, and it might be a hot topic. I myself have had two, I think, mammograms, and they were fine. And even that nurse in me, like trying to unprogram that from my brain is a little bit tough. Like, I really didn't ever feel convicted that I had to have a mammogram, that I had to have a pap smear. But uh, any of you guys got any strong opinions on that? In my area, I don't have like access to thermography, but I'd love to know more about that. If you guys have tried it, I'd like to know. I think that would be, you know, something cool to seek out. Um, but the mammogram thing, I'm definitely over. I think that is uh, regimented. That is, you know, well, you know, we don't have too much time to get me on that big pharma uh, still box, but I could go there. Jen, you act like you've got uh, something to say on that. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm actually a equine thermographer. Uh, so I kind of know a little bit about thermography and it is very interesting um, to see the uh, heat stress and cold stress on the body. Um, and thermography can detect heat signatures uh, with especially with breast cancer years and years before it becomes any problems whatsoever and it's just taking a picture there is no radiation or nothing else that's placed on the body so it is a really cool technology unfortunately uh, you know most people are going to dismiss it because it wasn't trained um, but um, if you do find a good thermographer and someone to read the images it is very well good place to start um, with the baseline and then yearly thermography scans. Yeah, for sure. Does anybody else have any um, ever tried it or have any opinions about it? No, I don't see any hands. And another thing that I'm going to bring up um, that I've been studying quite a bit lately is the lymph system. Like there's so much that gets overlooked in your lymph system and the amount of lymph fluid we have actually supersedes like your cardiac volume and your lymph is superficial and a lot of times even if we've got that double chin or that fullness in our face um it's lymph a lot of people will have that coochiness you know right here above your breast or in your armpit and it's it's lymph system so another really great thing that we could be doing for self-care and prevention is that lymph massage a lot of people use that rebound bouncing um as I've been doing some study and, and training on that I've always been one of those people that gets really superficial itchiness so like if I jog or if I mow the lawn or use one of those massage guns or whatever it just makes me itch like crazy and that is a lymph thing that is that lymph system okay. being stimulated so that tells me that I kind of have an excess amount of lymph and it's probably not the best quality so that all shifts and changes as you start detoxing, as you start taking better care of yourself. But that that lymph system, you know, if there's cancer involvement, there's generally a couple, couple of lymph nodes that they'll take with it. And that makes sense because as your body's trying to clean things up, those cells, those cancer cells are going to sit in that lymph system. And so the more stagnant that lymph system is, the the better chance those cancer cells have to to grow to manipulate cancer is super super sneaky and it scoots around the body and it it's like a you know an, an evil underground and it will change and morph and it will take dna from your cells and turn in to different cells so it doesn't just sit quietly in one place um and like skin cancer, people will think, well, that's not a big deal. I just had a little skin cancer. I got that removed. But that wasn't really your body trying to send you some communication, right? We, I like to think of our bodies as like nonverbal toddlers. So 
if you've got a one-year-old, a two-year-old, and they're in that uh, uh, e, uh, stage, you know, and they're trying to communicate to you their wants and their needs, what do you think your symptoms are? Your symptoms are your body grunting and groaning, trying to get your attention, trying to tell you what it doesn't like, or trying to tell you what it needs. But the majority of us have gotten to a place where we're so sick or we're just deaf. We've gone deaf to what our own bodies are trying to tell us. And when we start little by little every day, implementing some better strategies, start doing things right. Um, if you have your food allergies done, it doesn't really seem like a big deal, but if you can take that list of things that your body sees as toxic and refrain from it, give your body a relief from that stressor, let your immune system calm down and go to work on maybe some of those rogue cells that aren't cancer yet that you know of, but they're this close to being cancer, but your immune system is too busy taking care of the food proteins that are leaking into your bloodstream. So it doesn't have time to work on those rogue cells. Um, it's just all about, you know, resting your, your body wherever we can. And sometimes, you know, we eat so sometimes that's one of the easier ways to find that resting point. Um, I wonder if Stacy's got any more to add, maybe something that your mom went through. I'm just going to throw out there, um, like all of us will work with cancer patients. We don't fix cancer. We want to work with the body that was sick, that allowed the cancer to grow. So we don't treat cancer. We treat every person, no matter what disease they come in with, whether they're diabetic or whether they have cancer or whether they've got heart disease. We're not too concerned or new, too concerned with your disease, with your title, with your medical diagnosis. We're going to support that body, not, not the diagnosis. So like, um, I've got, I've, I've had a few, um, cancer patients and, you know, a lot of them, they're, they're not around. We, it wasn't a miraculous saving kind of thing. It, it was too late. It was too far progressed. Um, I've got one client who she does have, um, hormone positive breast cancer. Her Dutch test looks cleaner than mine. So you got me. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Just because we do a bunch of testing, that doesn't mean that we might still not be scratching our heads at the end of the day. But at the end of the day, um, I'm supporting her immune system, you know, and she's doing what she can to avoid food triggers and let her body heal. Um, she did do some chemo and radiation. So it's not, it's not part of our coaching place. It, it, it's, it would be out of our scope of practice to tell someone what to do as far as treatment. Um, we're just going to support them. We're just going to support the body that was sick that allowed the cancer to grow. Um, I mean, we can study it out. I've studied out a lot of different um, holistic cancer things and stuff like that. So we can always make suggestions. We can always help with that research. And because it's overwhelming, it's really overwhelming. If you're stressed out with a cancer diagnosis, um, sometimes you just need some support from somebody who's not a friend, who's not a family member, and who will tell you the hard stuff when you need to somebody who you can really say how sick you are that you don't have to pretend to be strong for. So um, I guess I'm just throwing out that out there. If anybody who is watching our video, watching our replay, and you know, somebody who does have cancer and who needs some support, it's really, really great to have that outside resource. I myself, um, in the, in the past, you know, I, I'm not, and we're each individuals on our business and our individuals. I generally, um, waive my fees for a cancer patient because the supplements are going to be expensive. And, um, most of the time, if somebody's fighting cancer, they don't have a lot of financial resources. So I got, 
sorry, Stacy, I got a little bit sidetracked on that, but I do want that to be known um, if this video goes out and somebody is looking for support and it's not pre-cancer, it is cancer. We do offer support to you. Go ahead, Stacy. Okay, yeah, so with my mom's cancer it was triple negative. Um, cancer is what it was and crazy story, you know, like you say, I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. And I did research when they told us not to do research. Um, I did it. And, you know, we, she did, like I said before, she did the treatment and then we treated her holistically and diet change. Cause obviously, um, sugar feeds cancer, stress feeds cancer. Um, triple negative is not hormonally fed typically. Um, it's, my opinion here is it's environmental. Um, my mom actually, we can't link it, but she actually was trying to quit smoking. So she used a smoking patch and put it on her boob. Mm. And a few months later, she had cancer. Mm. I also have an acquaintance that I know who's 20 some years old, had her doctor, she had went through treatment a couple of years back and she's what, about 28 now triple negative also what's typically very aggressive cancer from her cell phone being put in her bra mm. and people don't think of that 5g is not good radiation is not good keep those cell phones out of your bra it is causing breast cancer even the front pocket of your pants it's causing cancer so we need to look at these environmentals for sure but I do strongly suggest, like Tanya said, um, the Dutch test. I strongly suggest an immune panel. Cut your sugars. You know, eat clean. You're gonna have to, yes, do your supplements, things like that. But there, there's a lot with cancer, and like we say, it's to support the body for you to go through your treatments um, and come out the best you can with whatever you choose to do. But environmental, like you say, is huge. Also, besides the hormonal um mammograms you know no way no how i it's the radiation i i'm i'm high risk and there, people say why won't you do it are you crazy like no because i'm high risk i don't need to add to it so that's just how i feel about it but um yeah with the different cancers it's definitely we have sources we have the education we can help restore your body back to homeostasis and you know, help you definitely get through whatever you choose your chemo or your radiation or whatever, what's between you and your doctor. But that's pretty much what kind of how my story kind of went, got me into this. Oh, this has been really good. I kind of feel like we're kind of coming up to a place where it might be kind of a good place to end. Does anybody else have anything that you're just really wanting to pour out? No hands waving, no hands waving. So just to kind of wind things up, I appreciate anybody who is watching the replay, who anybody who came on to talk to us tonight or I guess I shouldn't say tonight, you might be listening whenever. And we just want you to know if you need help in the prevention stages, um, we would love to be there for you. And if you need help in the cancer stages, we are also here for you as well. All of us do take online as well as in-person consults. We would love to help you out, support you however we can, and just help you live your best life, whatever that looks like for you, one day at a time, one step at a time, making positive decisions. Thank you so much.